In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to integrate inheritance into our dual stick shooter. And so to begin with, I'm going to come up here and run the program and show you where we last left off. And you can see that by moving the left thumbstick, I can move the character around on the screen. And then by moving the right thumbstick, we can use that to control a flamethrower, which is a particle system. And flames are coming out of the end of the flamethrower. All right, so that's good. But right now we're really talking about inheritance and so how we're going to use that in a gaming context. So I'd like to start by looking at player and inside this class you can see we have a variable called sprite which is a sprite. We also have a boolean called is alive. We have a vector 3 for position. We have a float for the rotation of the character and specific to player we also have a float which is the speed that we'll actually need to use down here. Now if I jump over to particle you can see that we have similarity here. We have a sprite called sprite. We have a vector three for the position. We have something unique to particle, which is the velocity, but it too has a Boolean called is alive. So you can see that we have a little bit of redundancy. These classes are similar, but they're not exactly the same. So what we'd like to do is to create a generic game object class. And to do that, I'll come over here and right click on this project and we will add a new file and this is going to be an empty class and we'll call it game object and the first thing that'll do is come over to player and grab these using statements copy those come back over to here to game object all right now when designing the game object class we need to think about a couple of different things what we're doing here is to create a generic game object class that we could use in several different kinds of games not just this dual stick shooter so we kind of need to think generically when we're designing it. So what we'll do is come down here inside of the game object class and think about everything that's going to be common among most of the game objects. So to begin with, we saw that we had a sprite. So we'll go ahead and do this sprite sprite. We'll also put in that vector three, which is going to be pause. We'll do another one here for vector three for the velocity. And you may say, hey, what if we're not actually going to use something like velocity here for all of our game objects? That's OK. It's still going to work out. OK, so the next thing that we had was public bool is alive. because that's a useful variable to have. Also, we'd like to be able to rotate these sprites. So let's say public float rot. OK, and then the last one that we're going to do is to add this public graphics context and we'll call it context. And this is going to be necessary, especially in player. If we jump over there real quick and we scroll down, you can see that when we created this particle, we needed to pass it a context. OK, so this is good so far. Now, inside the constructor, we need to bring all of those variables to life or we need to initialize them. So the first thing that I'll do is to say this dot context gets context. Now, we don't have any parameters coming in yet, so let's go ahead and do that so that context makes sense. So we have a graphics context coming in as a parameter called context. Um, we're also going to have a texture 2D called text. We'll have a vector 3, oops, vector 3 called pause, and then we'll have another vector 3 for velocity. And again, this is just a generic constructor that we will be able to use for all the different game objects that we'll have on the screen. So let's use those parameters and we'll say sprite gets a new sprite passing it the context as well as the texture. The next thing that we'll do is to say this dot pause gets pause, this dot vel gets vel, and this dot is alive gets true. So we'll start them out alive. And then finally, we'll say this dot rot gets 0.0f. Now, this is a good generic kind of template to work with. Other things that we'll want to put up here are public virtual. And we'll come back and talk about that in a second void update and this one's going to take in the gamepad data we'll just call it gamepad data like we've seen everywhere else okay now on the inside we're going to do one thing something that's generic for all game objects and specifically we'll say that sprite dot rotation gets rot and sprite dot position gets pause now let's go back and talk about that virtual keyword here Remember, because we're talking about inheritance, this virtual keyword says that we're going to mark this function as being overridable. In other words, as we have children in the hierarchy, they're going to be able to redefine the update method that they've inherited if they don't like it. So we'll do the same thing here for render. 
public virtual void render. And it's not going to take in any parameters. And so what we'll do here is to simply tell the sprite to render. OK, good. So believe it or not, that is our game object. Now we can add to this a little bit later on if we see something that's really going to be important for our game. But for now, this is going to do. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we need to come over to player and to particle and to change it where these are inheriting from game object. So let's start with particle. I'll come over here. And the first thing that we're going to do is to get rid of these variables that we've already declared inside of game object. In fact, all three, no, all four of these have already been declared. And we'll also inherit from game object. So at this point, remember, we've absorbed all of those properties from game object. So we do have a sprite and a position and a velocity and is alive inside of particle. But we've also added this one additional one here called age. OK, now the next part is a little bit tricky. So here you can see that we have a graphics context coming in. We have a texture, we have a position, and we have a velocity. And fortunately, this is good because now what we're going to do is say colon base. And this is going to call the game objects constructor. This has always been a point of confusion for students because base, for some reason, is difficult for students to understand. But in this case, remember, when we say base by itself, not base dot anything, but when we say base and we call it as a function, it's going to call game objects constructor right here. So let's go back here and finish this out. Notice that when I say the open parentheses here that you can see that it's calling the game object constructor. So I'm just going to pass it the context, I'll pass it text, I'll pass it pause, and I'll pass it vel. Now what's going on here is that particle, when a particle is brought to life, gets a graphics context called context, it gets this texture 2D called text, and so on, and we're immediately passing that off to game objects constructor. Because we've done that and we've called game objects constructor, here you can see that we've assigned all of this information over. I can come back over here to particles constructor and I can remove these statements right here that are not specific to a generic game object. In other words, I can come down here and anything that's related specifically to particle I'm going to keep. Is alive has been assigned. And notice that I'm keeping this this.vel gets vel times three because that's specific to particle. Okay, now if we jump down here to update, First thing that I want to do is to mark that this is an override. So I'll say override and notice that it turns blue because it is a keyword. And on the inside of this, we're going to keep most of this code. In fact, I would say we're going to keep all of it, but we're going to add one additional line down here, base.update and pass it gamepad data. Now we haven't received gamepad data, Oops, data. So what we'll do is modify this and say that this update inside of particle is going to need a gamepad data. OK, so that looks good. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll come over here and modify player. Now, player is in a similar situation. So what I'll do is come over here and to remove the redundancy. The only thing that's specific to player in this case is speed. In fact, let's go ahead and use that down here in update. Say multiply by speed. And that way our character doesn't get eaten by zombies. We'll add those guys later. OK, so in essence, we have four different attributes here. We have speed. We have the graphics context. Actually, that needs to go away because we've already declared that up in game object. Just verify it's right here. You can see in that line. So we come back over here to player. We have a texture 2D that is not inside of here. But let's go ahead and fix that because you can see that the constructor here is a little bit messed up. So the first thing that I'll do is fix this constructor. We're no longer going to take in this texture name, this string. So instead, we'll say texture 2D, text, vector 3, pause, and then we need to add one additional variable here, vector 3, vel. In other words, we need to make this constructor look like game objects constructor. Is that a requirement? No, but it just makes it a little bit easier for us. OK, now similar to the way that we built particle, let's go ahead and call the constructor for game object. Notice that it's not liking it. So I'll come up here and say, yes, we are going to inherit from game object. And now when I come back down here, I open this up. You can see that it's calling the game objects constructor at this point. So let's do the same thing. We'll pass it the context. We'll pass it text. 
we'll pass it pause and we'll pass it vel. Okay, now on the inside of this, we have a lot of code that we don't necessarily need. Specifically, we can come down here and wipe out one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five lines of code here. Notice that we want to keep the sprite.centerx um, code that we had on lines 23 and 24 here. We need, still need to do that. Uh, 26 has been done inside of the game objects constructor, so I can remove that. And again, we can verify that right here on line 23. Right. So do we need to keep these two lines? Absolutely, because this is where we are bringing to life our list of particles. Okay. Now, if we drop down, you can see that we have a special render method where we're going to have to override that. And then we're also going to have to override the update method. So let's go ahead and do that. Public override void update. Notice that this one already takes in this gamepad data. Uh, we'll keep almost all of this. But in fact, if you look down here in lines 58 and 59, sprite.rotation and sprite.position are getting reassigned. But we already did that here inside of game object. So watch what we can do. We can just say base.update, passing it the game pad data. And let's make sure that we did that for particle we did. So we have some redundancy there, which is actually good in this case. OK, uh, let's continue on. We'll look down here at render public override void render. And in this case, we're not really going to have to change anything, but we did need to mark this as override. Now, if we didn't do this, by the way, you'll get a warning about this. It's saying that you're trying to hide a method. Essentially, you're doing things incorrectly. All right, good. So we're probably going to have to come over here. If I were to compile this right now, uh, I'm almost afraid to do so because the constructors would, um, you know, we've changed the constructors here. So if I did try to run this, let's see if we can rebuild it. Okay, notice that it's complaining about this, where we bring the hero to life. And the reason is because we changed that constructor. So let's go back over here and look at the constructor. You can see it wants a graphics context, a texture, and two different vector threes. So let's jump back over here to main. And notice that we don't have an initial velocity for our hero, uh, but that's, that's okay. We'll go ahead and make one. So vector three, we'll call it vel. And you can do whatever you want to here. Gets a new vector three and just pass zero, 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 meaning that essentially this velocity is going to be zero. It's going to be non-existent. Okay, so now that we have that information, we are going to have to pass a texture as well. So let's do this, texture 2D, text gets a new texture 2D. And again, the name of our asset, I believe, is hero. You can see it up there. So we'll pass in application slash assets slash hero dot png and also the value false and then when i come over here i'll go ahead and wipe this out so we can see comma you can see that it's going to take that texture in text oops, let's try that again text comma it wants a position which we now have and it also wants a velocity so that looks good all right so let's uh let's try to compile that again i'll come over here and say build all and we do have one error here on line 52, and that's because it needs the gamepad data. Let's try it again. And it looks like zero errors, one warning. So if we were to run it, I don't believe we're going to see anything different. We're still able to move around the screen, and we're still able to shoot, but the internal structure of the code is significantly different. It's actually designed much better. So that's it for now. Uh, hopefully you can see that by creating this game object class, it's a pretty robust approach to coding. And we're going to be able to reuse this from project to project.